Um, but I did want to ask one thing of folks in the room, and if you could be our ambassadors to others who are not in the room. There's a QR code at the last page of our agenda. And it's been in the rooms, like there. It is our evaluation. And we really want to tell lovely Ann Chick, who's sitting over there, how well we did. And it's by session. So if you've gone to different sessions, you just have to know the session number. It's in the book. You don't even have to remember. And then it asks you five questions. And, and, and if you could complete that for us, it would be wonderful. And please, with the other folks who will come later this afternoon, or please, if you see your friends, tell them to also do it, okay? It really is important to us, just to know, besides what I said about letting Ann know, it's also important to us for us to know and modify as we go along with future meetings and future directions. So at that point, I don't want to, um, I don't want to uh, delay the regional conversation and talk, and so I'm going to turn it over to Fernando Salazar, our board member and university. Uh, oh. Cayetano Heredia, Peruvian University. Said it better than I. <laughs> uh, what? You said it better than me. Oh. Um, Kevin is uh, the boss of us. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's clap, Kevin. <laughs> let's make some energy. Let's clap, Dr. Prapapu. Uh, would you please uh, come, uh, Beatrice? Dr. Samar Rafik, would you please come? Yeah. As you may know, I work in school prevention, and for us, life starts with an energizer. So I'm trying to do that thing, right? Please. You here? You are in order. Okay. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Uh, we are in the last day of this uh, fantastic conference in which we have learned many things. Uh, today, plenary, plenary number five, is one of the mo most expected uh, plenaries for me. Uh, because we are going to have the testimony and the um, and the presentations of uh, representatives of four regions of the ICUDDR, in which we were going to wide our horizon of learning and sharing experiences. Uh, Dr. Beatriz Katungu is going to talk about how make advocacy since the, the universities for prevention, treatment, recovery, etc. Uh, Dr. Praprapu is going to share with us uh, her learnings about the COVID pandemic and how this impacted the substance use and how she learned about that and how is he using at this moment to learn more about developing programs in drug demand reduction. Uh, Ms. Jimena Kalowski is going to show us a different aspect of ICUDDR. Uh, she is chief of the, of the unit in the, the drug demand reduction of the Inter-American Drug Abuse Control Commission, CICAD. I know that better in Spanish. Uh, it's the only region in, in the world in which an international organization coordinates universities. That is something that is new, is maybe unique, and help us to to share experiences since the point of view of policymakers and the academy. So we will learn about that. And Dr. Noor Ulsaman Rafik is going to tell us about her experiences of the, in the academy in Pakistan, in which he is going to show us what he's doing in drug demand reduction. So four different experiences in which the only common denominator is drug demand reduction. 
Are you ready, my friends? All right. We will start this, uh, this plenary with Dr. Beatriz Katungu. Let me start this. Dr. Beatriz Katungu is a full-time faculty member in the Department of Psychology at the Kenyatta University, Kenya. She's practicing psychologist and clinical supervisor in the field of counseling, psychology, and addiction treatment in Kenya, and worked closely with the Kenyan National Authority for the campaign against alcohol and drug abuse, <coughs> as well as Addiction Prevention and Rehabilitation Association of Kenya. She's widely published, has won research grants, and presented numerous conferences in the field of addiction science. She teaches counseling, psychology, and addiction treatment science-related courses and has been successfully supervised several master and PhD students. And he, he is also founder of the national chapter of ISUP in, in Kenya, and many other things. Uh, Dr. Katungu is going to present us uh, the first presentation. Um, thank you very much, sir, for the introduction. And thank you, every one of us, for the opportunity to be here and share our experiences from Africa. I want to express appreciation to the organizers of this conference and the sponsorships that have been given to many of us from Africa to be in this uh, space and to also participate in the uh, ICUDDR conference 2023. Um, I am acknowledging the support of the many leaders from Africa that are part of this presentation. I want to acknowledge them, those that are present. We have Dr. Rihanna, we have got Dr. Martin, and everyone else that is not mentioned. So I do think that um, we have heard about the UNODC uh, global context about drugs in the drug report 2022 and what's of interest for us is actually the context of africa we are a continent with over 50 countries and over 1 billion people stretching from all the way indian ocean to the atlantic ocean making us a, you know a good transit continent for drugs as well as a producer and therefore we are affected by the problem of drugs like every other continent uh, the, one of the latest reports of UNODC suggests that we have a bigger population that's affected by the problem of drugs, and particularly um, younger population. I want to request that I stand up because I am a teacher and I have difficulty speaking while I sit. So with your permission, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And so um, because of that, we are concerned as a continent that we need to get more involved in terms of addressing the issues of prevention, issues of treatment, recovery support, and public health initiatives. As a continent, we have actually uh, focused on participating in ICUDDR because ICUDDR does meet the goals we have and the needs of our continent. And therefore, we, we are part of ICUDDR because we want to support the rapid improvement in competencies and skills among current and future generation of addiction professionals. We want to network. We want to participate in our policy our advocacy as well as applied addiction research. Now, as a continent, under the umbrella of ICUDDR, our universities have come together and they are demonstrating a lot of commitment to build capacity to professionalize the field and to translate evidence into practice. And this is through activities like member recruitment, you know, increased networking, collaborating with local and international partners. We are engaging policymakers. We are doing peer mentoring and support. And I'm just going to be sharing how we have been doing it and some of the output of what we have been doing. Now, we are only able to do this because we have an elaborate leadership structure that was founded um, a couple of years ago, just before COVID. And we have got the continental leaders 
led by myself and uh, deputized by Dr. Martin kindly. Just, uh, yes, thank you very much. And uh, also Dr. Rihanna from South Africa, who is our secretary. And that is the African coordinating team that I want to acknowledge. We have got regional leaders. We have got different regions of Africa, the West, the South, the North, the East, and even the Central. And so I acknowledge the leadership uh, team. And then we have got the country leaders that do a lot of work to network with universities and give us these activities. Now that coordination, as you can see, is what has helped us to be able to achieve and report on these activities. We have developed a model you know, that we are using that is um, you know, context related. This model guides the universities that want to be part of ICUDDR in Africa. And it has got uh, six steps that I just want to highlight. Uh, we ask that you identify strategic faculty in your university that would like to participate in ICUDDR activities. We conduct a walkthrough in, in collaboration with Colombo Plan, ISAP, in the specific countries. And we actually use the walkthroughs to build capacity of faculty to be able then to develop programs and to mount them in their universities. In the third step, we do need assessment of universities for program development. And I want to acknowledge the Southern region, and specifically South Africa. They have developed a needs assessment tool that helps us to assess the needs of universities. And we are willing to share that with other continents. In the fourth stage, we do capacity building for program development. We acknowledge that developing academic programs is a really difficult and complex task. And we have developed a course that is available online that can be used to build capacity of faculty. At the fifth step, then we support universities to develop and implement the programs in their universities. And in the final step, then we evaluate the impact of these programs in the different universities, countries, and regions. Um, we have also been doing a lot of activities of capacity building through mentor-led webinars. We are doing this in collaboration with other organizations such as ISAP, and right there, you can see that in April of uh, this year, led by Professor Mikal, the chair of ICUDDR, want to acknowledge his mentorship and support for many of us in our uh, countries and continent. We were doing a um, webinar here, an international webinar, that was led by Professor Mikal and the three of us regional leaders, uh, Martin, Rihanna, and myself, were actually presenters. And we shared experiences of the progress in development of curricula the challenges and issues, and that was very significant, not only for Africa, but for all the other members from different parts of the world. We have also been doing capacity building by tapping into the peer competencies. We did realize that we have a lot of capacities within our universities and countries and regions, and therefore we have been having what we are calling peer-driven, regionally-led uh, webinars that are held quarterly. And uh, this is one of them, the first of them, which I led, and I was sharing about how we can translate evidence into practice through university-based programs, and our sharing the model that I just described earlier so that every one of the participants from our continent is aware of where they can begin. We had our second quarter webinar series, um, and you can see right there, the presenter was from Southern region, that is South Africa. We had about 53 participants. Dr. Rihanna was sharing about the needs assessment tool that they have developed that we can use as different countries. And uh, it was very successful. We have had the third quarter webinar series. This was from the Northern region, and I want to acknowledge Dr. Rania, who is also our regional coordinator for the Northern region. She shared on how we can have a multidisciplinary approach, bringing in different departments, different universities, to be able to enhance implementation. We are actually looking forward, and that's part of them as well, we're looking forward to our final webinar for this year, our fourth quarter by the Western region. Please check out the ICUDDR website and be part of it. We have also been doing peer mentoring for academic program development. We do appreciate that some of our faculty have not developed any program. They do not know where to begin. And therefore, we take it upon ourselves to mentor them in terms of how to develop our programs. And right there, you can see a team from Ethiopia that's interested in starting a program and we're having a virtual meeting to mentor them. We've also been doing a lot of awareness creation to address issues of stigma. 
we have discovered that many of our universities are like ivory towers. They are not relevant to the communities around them. And we have decided to challenge that as African universities and get into the community. But we have also realized that within universities, we have a community. And some of the youth that are severely affected by problems of drugs are actually right there as our students. And therefore, this year, we decided to be very strategic and intentional in reaching out to the communities within our universities as we extend to the communities around us. We decided to anchor ourselves on existing structures. We are aware of the Mental Health Awareness Month that was in May. We are aware of the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Trafficking. And so we anchored ourselves on those processes that are already existing. And we brought out our message of uh, you know, fighting stigma. What we did and how we did it is that we developed a concept note that guided the members on how to do it. We gave them an option of a variety of activities. We asked them to make sure they were low um, in terms of resources because we didn't have a budget. They were context driven and they were sustainable. And many of them chose. And uh, these are just some images of what was done. From the south, we had University of Cape Town creating awareness in the University of Cape Town. We have a Kenyatta University, we have a University of Cairo and um, you know, that's Dr. Rania that you can see, creating awareness in their university representing Northern region. We have got Kenyatta University, which is my university, creating um, awareness within our university representing the East African region. And uh, we also have uh, West Africa there, the University of Namdi Azikiwe, again, creating um, awareness and reaching a great number of people. We have been collaborating with critical internal and external partners, and we can see again in West Africa, we see Nigeria um, is partnering with the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. We can see Kenyatta University there engaging with top management, student leaders, and other stakeholders. We can see um, University of Cairo in Egypt partnering with Bendy Gazi University, and again, you know, bringing in a lot of collaborative work. We can see Namibia representing the southern region, working with media. And uh, because of all that, we've been able to reach over 150 participants through webinars, over 1,000 participants, awareness creation, over 10 new partners have been engaged. We have more universities now joining ICUDDR. We have more universities interested in developing programs. We have initiated policies development. In my university, as a result of the activities we did, we are actually developing a mental health policy that is integrating substance use prevention. Those are our footprints. Those are our new collaborations. We have had challenges. We have had lessons learned, including the value of being collaborators. We want, as we look forward, to strengthen um, the networks in the universities, the regions, the continent, and with other agencies and professions. Uh, we also want to evaluate the impact of what we are doing. I want to acknowledge all these partners that are represented here, and we do not want to leave anyone behind as we move forward. And we invite you to give us more partnerships so that we can move Africa to have footprints of ICUDDR uh, in the entire continent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Katungu. Uh, very nice presentation. Now, all right. Now we are going to have the presentation of Dr. Praprapun. Uh, she's ICU, ICU DDR Asian Pacific Regional coordinator and she's going to present the, re the report and is our host. Okay. Good morning. So um, the representative from the Asia Pacific Regional Collaboration of ICUD, this is our office that uh, we opened since 2018, but we are a member since uh, 2016 and one of founder of ICUD, they are. So, this is an announcement of uh, Mahidon University as a regional collaboration center for the regional of Asia and Pacific region. And this is a group of founder ICUD. They are 
Uh, here is a group from North America. Uh, I see Professor Roger. I see Professor Fernando, uh, Philippines, Hanoi group, and Professor Diana. Yeah, and I know. So um, this is a group of founder ICUD. Uh, since uh, 2016, we think of we should have a platform for university because university uh, have a role, uh, important role for research and development. So that's the reason why INL support the grant for all of us to make a platform. And then we call our name group of ICUDDR, ICU, ICUDDR, okay. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, the, yes, this is a memorandum of a, uh, agreement between Mahedon and ICUDDR since 2018 that uh, we have a mission to build and support a regional network uh, of university and colleagues to improve professional competency in prevention treatment and apply research for SUDs and related conditions and to uh, increase access to quality. We have assurance of the higher education quality that we, I, uh, Mahidon and Indonesia, we use a AUNQA same platform. And this is activity before COVID-19 that we have a research collaboration with Japan and we have a course that we can transfer credit with Japan and Faculty of Criminology um, at uh, Addiction Prevention. And then we, I and Professor Fernando, reviewer for UPC course in Prague and we are a member of ISERP. And since uh, uh, before 2016, this is 2012, that we are a member and commissioner of GCCC, and uh, uh, many events that we have a regional conference in our country, and uh, exchange staff and students, and with Dr. Nu for initiate and strengthening uh, addiction professional in Pakistan. And this is a cross at Faculty of Medicine, Hokkaido University, that we have a collaboration. And this is an education uh, before uh, we collaborate with Colombo Plan. We have our course since uh, 2000, um, maybe 2004. We have our course, Addiction Theology, Addiction Studies, that we have a principle of theory. This is a semester one that students should study. And uh, we have application for the practicum that we have a planning, implementation, and evaluation. And we have a principle of theory of research and uh, management of training program and knowledge meant for elective. And uh, we have a seminar course for uh, preparing the research and dissertation. And uh, we uh, totally, we have a two years uh, for thesis and total of the 36 credit that we have. But when we have a um, collaborate with Colombo Plan. The Colombo Plan uh, initiated UTC and UPC for, for the addiction professional. Uh, we are the same goal that uh, master degree pro the, uh, produce the addiction professional in the field of addiction study. So how we can do? Because we have a digit the credit and cross and subject already, but this is the module of Colombo, right? Module 1, mod curriculum 1, curriculum 2, 3 to 8. Then uh, at, uh, the, the course need to revise every five years. The uni all of the university the world uh, have to revise. So I take that opportunity to revise our course to initiate and uh, implement uh, UTC. Because UTC course 1, Seem like as our credit of the foundation and theory, psychopharmacology, psycho and psychiatry, um, and very about that we are same. That's the reason why easy implementation and transfer credit uh, from addiction professional. But I think I have one scholarship who passed the ICAP one. When, uh, once we have the scholarship, how qualification to got the scholarship, I said, the student should pass the ICAP one. If you pass ICAP one and then apply to our course, so you got the scholarship, please show me the Lubna. Yes, she is the first scholarship from my student from Pakistan. She is from Pakistan. She got 20,000 US dollars from our course because she passed ICAP one 
uh, from Johoburu, Malaysia, many years ago. <laughs> okay, two of us are getting older. <laughs> okay, and then you got a scholarship apply for master degree. So uh, Lubna can take only one year in master degree because uh, she passed the uh, theory and fundamental via uh, all course of uh, ICAP already. This is an example that you can implement UTC and UPC in the university and easily to promote ICAP for the university. For example, you promote via the scholarship. This is an example. Um, uh, once we uh, have a coronavirus hit us, I didn't have any student across the world to my program. Totally zero. The program closed. School closed. Everything closed. Uh, how can I do? So we try to keep uh, in touch among our friends, like uh, try to keep in touch with Professor Nami from South Korea. We try to keep in touch uh, with Werner from Philippines. We try to keep in touch with uh, Japan. If all of them, we try to keep in touch via webinar. Uh, Verna is one of the head of subcommittee of training. Verna, yes, in our region, yes, thank you. And Professor Nami, yes, Dean, yes, please show to everyone, yes. Professor Nami is Dean of uh, uh, Psycho um, Addiction Study Program, PhD program uh, from South Korea. Um, we try to keep in touch and, um, and Japan, unfortunately, Japan is in Bangkok now and we will meet up tomorrow. Um, a research group with Japan that we can do via uh, online. <laughs> so, and after uh, the COVID is like a, the, the global or the world uh, slightly, slowly open up, slowly open up, then we jump to everything that we can continue. For example, this is a, a, in Japan that we try to visit Japan and talk about uh, collaboration and continue research because we didn't have the student. We just do only research because we cannot open course and then we go to the Japan. But that time very difficult to visit, but we try. And we, uh, we have a grant that we are lucky that the uh, U.S. Department of State support the grant for me for the uh, Young Southeast Asia Initiative. No, Young Southeast Asia Leaders Initiative. Uh, uh, this is a project that's supported by U.S. government by Anne Chick. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> uh, to, yes, thank you. That support me to uh, set up this project. But before COVID, we tried to uh, training this project in Myanmar in person. Unfortunately, that we shared because of COVID-19. We are all live. We have a good speaker, Professor Eager. Thank you, Ka. And we have many speakers for this project. Um, Dr. Yatan and... Where is... Yeah. Okay. Everyone that... And uh, thank you for Prof, uh, Dr. Kelvin that uh, uh, opening remark and Mr. President of Mehidon University for opening and closing remark. And uh, we have the 11 country join us. And we... Uh, how we can do we can set up focal point person. The focal point person is our friend. Our friend can, can uh, reach out the participant to uh, uh, collaborate with this project. This is a trick that you can keep your friend among COVID-19. So, and, and uh, as a speaker, uh, like a board of director, Will, willing to support us if we set up a webinar, although we are different zone, uh, so thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are success from this project that we can keep in touch among uh, region via webinar, uh, research project, and uh, other activity that we share with others. And uh, yes, this is a, a three-day series webinar. You can imagine, actually, if you have the webinar, it is difficult to invite uh, the participant stay with you for all day, three days on webinar. But we can because it is um, like a attractive and beautiful course that you decide. So all of participants can stay with you all day. Uh, three day and three silly and participants ask you when the silly two when 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 we are waiting waiting oh wow 
That's great because you see the first series from April, second series May, and third series June. But all of participants waiting, waiting, and waiting. No leave. We can keep everyone all and support the certificate. This is a certificate for the focal point. We have Dr. Cindy Biding, the former uh, staff, uh, key staff of ICDR focal point for Malaysia. This is an example that you can keep in touch among uh, COVID-19. And, uh, and uh, last week before we uh, opened this conference, we have a collaborate the UTC walkthrough that uh, support by Thailand International Cooperation Agency, Ministries of Foreign Affairs support 10 scholarship, full 10 scholarship uh, for developing country, for example, Cambodia, Laos, Pedia, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Bhutan. So they joined us last, last week uh, that uh, have a full support uh, for traveling, accommodation, and meals, and podium. And this is an example. If you keep in touch and strong connecting, so you can, you can have a good activity to share with your uh, colleague in your region. And uh, this is a paper for uh, the second one of uh, goal. We have a goal for the uh, education development, and this is the second one is for research collaboration. We try to encourage and increase applied research and publication among regions. This is an example that we published with the Japan group, that uh, this is a research group that we have named, I see you here, yeah, yeah, you are, yes. Nay is one of uh, our alumni, and we asked her to join our research group, uh, and then we already done and published already uh, chair. This is a grand chair between Thailand and Japan uh, cooperation. We doing and, and taking care of our side, Thailand, and Japan taking care of their side. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor. Um, okay. Uh, and then we share uh, when we visiting. And the third one is advocacy. So we have uh, adopt international standard. This is a meeting among Mikau and um, NASAC. Uh, we are a one of committee of NASAC and developing of the international standard and then uh, initiate in our country for international standard. And we have a panel for international expert modify uh, together with NASAC standard meet and need uh, school around the world that we uh, done already. And okay, that's it. So although you see every activity that we do, but His Royal Highness uh, has eloquently stated that true success is not in the learning, but in its application to the benefit of mankind. So this is a new office at Faculty of Medicine, Mahedon University. Please visit us if you have time uh, to Bangkok. Thank you, Ka. Thank you so much, Dr. Prapapung. I don't know how can you do this, coordinating all of the conference, also this wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, now we are going to have the presentation of uh, Ms. Jimena Kalowski. Jimena Kalowski, since 1997, working in the field of substance use addiction in different contexts. Uh, first, she worked as a director of various treatment programs then she developed and implemented health programs, as well as conducting individual and family psychotherapy. Ms. Kalowski obtained a master's degree in drug addiction, which culminated with her thesis, adherence to treatment in people with drug addiction. More recently, she developed school prevention programs and was involved in the formulation of public policies. During 2015 and 2018, uh, Ms. Kalowski was the chief of the programmatic division of the National Service for the Prevention and Rehabilitation of Drug and Alcohol Consumption, Senda of Chile. She oversaw the demand reduction section, which includes the areas of prevention, treatment, social integration, human development, and problematic use. Since June 1, 2019, is the chief of the demand reduction unit of the Inter-American Drug Abuse Control Commission, CICAL by its acronym in Spanish. Hello? Yes. Thank you, Fernando. <laughs> Sorry, we are lost my presentation, but... 
No worries, no worries. Thank you very much to having me. Um, as uh, Fernando say, I'm Jimena Kalapsky, and the Chief of the Man Reduction Unit in the Organization of American States. Thank you very much to uh, Thailand to, to uh, having this uh, big event, and congratulations to ICU DDR for our organ ah, perfect <laughs> for uh, this organization. This is a big organization, and of course, uh, thank you to INL for all their support that you are giving us. Um, as you know, uh, the Organization of American States. Uh, Fernando said something about what's uh, important is um, when you have an international organization that works with, with um, academia. Um, the Organization of American States is maybe the oldest uh, international organization and um, um, it works uh, in like a dialogue uh, between different countries in, in our region. Perfect. We are in Washington, D.C., uh, but I am from Chile in South America. Uh, this organization was created in 1986, the CICAD. CICAD is the uh, forum political forum for our countries to uh, have discussions about the drug problems, not only in the demand reduction, uh, but we have a different dialogue about supply, about narco-trafficking, about security, etc. Uh, we have a um, um, hemispheric drug strategy and plan of action that orient or guide the um, work that all our countries uh, are doing um, in different contexts. Um, as you know, we have um, here, perfect. We have um, important issues that uh, are um, we have to uh, work in our countries like human rights, uh, vulnerable groups, gender, etc. I'm not going to read this mission because Fernando will cut me the time. <laughs> but um, um, what is important? We have um, a key uh, point in our collaboration with the universities. Uh, the most important thing that uh, in CICAD uh, uh, to work with the universities is to have a dialogue between academia, universities, and policymakers. Uh, it's not easy, as you know, because um, as uh, Igor said yesterday in another meeting, uh, mostly of our leaders take decisions without um, evidence base, uh, without data, and maybe with a common sense. Uh, so uh, this is the most important thing that uh, we have to face when we, we want to work the academia and the um, policy maker. So, uh, what are our key points? We have uh, to uh, introduce uh, uh, the drug issues in undergrad program in our region because, as maybe the mostly of the another country, we don't have a good preparation in undergrad uh, uh, careers uh, to to demand reduction. Not only demand reduction. Uh, um, also supply too. Uh, we need to pilot research and community development studies, uh, diagnostic of uh, skills and competencies of human resources, design of training curriculums by levels and competences, provi provision of training and service providers, uh, etc. Ah, we are working with a, a drug issue in postgraduate nursing programs. I don't know. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> 
Um, so, design and implementation of a state and regional certification process, as uh, our partner said before. I'm not going to tell you about our strategic. <laughs> Perfect. What is the relation between ICU DDR and OAS CICAD? Um, we have a memorandum of understanding that give us the framework to cooperation and technical, technical assistance between ICU DDR uh, and CICAD. I think we have a good relation. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and we give a, a support, mutually support in different activities. <clears throat> Yes, this was a pre-pandemic time uh, in Cusco uh, when we have a, um, a big meeting with the uh, universities of our, our region in, in the ICU DDR Regional Coordinator Center uh, of Latin America. So when pandemic time start, we start doing uh, different webinars. We, we did a lot of webinars uh, with the support of different universities, I think that maybe uh, it was the most important um, lesson for pandemic times. Uh, in between, in, in this kind of platform, we, we can have more democratic participation in uh, different um, knowledge that uh, we, we did before. Uh, so uh, we have um, the only two panels, for example, with the uh, UNAM National Autonomous University of Mexico, University of Argentine Social Museum, CESC University of Colombia, uh, State Distance University Costa Rica, Central University of uh, Chile. So we organized uh, six panels, and I don't know if we have another number for today, but we have 66, 60, 72, perfect, universities of our member states. Um, as you know, uh, I came from the long uh, country, uh, down the, the, um, the picture in blue color. So, it's a long travel <laughs> for here. So, uh, we have um, uh, a ICU group ad hoc in different uh, problematic that we are fans in, in our region. And uh, for example, after the pandemic times, we have I think three big, bigger challenges for our countries because all the people say uh, that's done, uh, uh, pandemic, uh, it's gone, but uh, we, are, um, we are now with three big problems. One, if the, our children in our countries, our children are not returned to uh, a school. That is a big problem when we think in uh, prevention, for example. Uh, uh, as you know, m many uh, of our countries uh, have uh, several um, pandemic uh, restrictions, but after the pandemic times, uh, children are not returned to, to, to classes in the school. Also, we have difficulties to access to treatment programs after pandemic times, mostly uh, in women, because in pandemic times, women have to support, have to support their families, and now there is a problem that is, um, is maintaining uh, in, in, the, in this time. So, uh, women have more work, in, the, in, in their homes, they are not 
uh, returning to work uh, out the house, at the home, but also they uh, have more difficulties to have a, a, a treatment program because I think, it's a particular opinion, mostly of our uh, treatment programs are more um, uh, strict in the, um, in, in the framework, uh, strict in the agenda, strict in the uh, times, etc. So, and also we have a third problem in our region that uh, is a mental health problem. I suppose that in another country we have the same problem after uh, pandemic times. So, I hope with uh, the support of ICU DDR we can face this uh, problematic with the interesting um, exchange of information. So, uh, this year we had the um, first Latin American Caribbean regional meeting of the ICU DDR. It was in April in Buenos Aires, Argentina, the bigger country near Chile in the map. <laughs> And uh, we have the participation of uh, 21 universities from Latin America and the Caribbean countries in this meeting. Uh, in that meeting, we uh, uh, exchange experiences about a CICAD program, uh, the ICUDR strategic, strategic direction, because it's, um, thank you, <laughs> because it's uh, so necessary for us to um, to be in the framework in the framework of the uh, ICU DDR International. Uh, we had a workshop uh, with Dr. Richard Page about publishing addiction addiction science. We have a presentation of uh, GCCC credentials, also ITTC, and we work in different. Um, uh, groups about how we can plan our activities for our region. So, our aspiration to, okay, uh, is to promote uh, coordinated uh, research, training, international cooperation, etc. in the Western Hemisphere, promoting cooperation between National Drug Commission. I think maybe that is the most important thing for us. Um, to strengthen the collaboration between universities and governments, because um, mostly of the time uh, they uh, don't work together. Uh, and as, as I said before, uh, policymakers take the decision about common sense and, and not about uh, science. Uh, and, of course, uh, membership grow. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Kalowski, Jimena, muchas gracias. Uh, now we are going to invite Dr. Uh, Saman Rafik for the presentation. An overview of the activities for drug demand reduction in academia in Pakistan from 2020 to 2023. Thank you, uh, Fernando, and good morning to everybody. I'm really grateful to ICU DDR, as well as organizers, and congratulate to the University of Chiang Mai, as University of Mahidol, and my friend, Dr. Prabhupon, for organizing such a wonderful conference. Thank you very much. It's uh, really a great pleasure. It's really a great pleasure to be telling about how the things are taking place as far as I see uh, universities are in Pakistan is concerned. Actually, uh, Phoenix Foundation for Research and Development is working as a bridge between various universities in Pakistan because when we talk about Pakistan, we don't have substance use programs in any of the curricula which is being taught in various universities in social sciences. So, after that uh, uh, Dosit Thani regional conference, 
we took up this initiative and we started up to, uh, to go to the various universities and talk about the importance of substance use disorder to be part of the curriculum. And that was the beginning. These are a few of the universities we have got an, a very long history as far as these universities are concerned. Some of the universities are more than 150 years old. And uh, when we talk about Pakistan, uh, our recent uh, census has taken place about and uh, has been approved about a week before and now we are 241 million people in Pakistan. While looking at the number of substance use disorder uh, in one of the presentation, I think that was of Beatrice, uh, number was around 286 million across the globe and we in Pakistan 241 million at the moment. Prevalence rate is was around 6% when the last uh, uh, drug use survey was taken up, that was uh, in 20, uh, 2012. And uh, according to that, we were around 6.7 uh, million, 6.7, uh, six uh, uh, six, uh, yeah, 6.7 million people were there who are actually using any type of substance at that time. But keeping in view the same prevalence, that is around 6%, and looking at the 241 uh, 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 million people, you can imagine what is the number at the moment, and that is the main dilemma when we talk about substance use in Pakistan. Uh, moreover, when we talk about uh, uh, the age groups, the studies are being taken into 15 to 64 years of age. One of uh, our colleagues, unfortunately, we don't have data for, from various universities uh, in Pakistan because no estimates has been taken up. But my colleague over here, Dr. Salman, he conducted one of the researches in uh, Gilgit, Baltistan province. And there, and that was conducted with the school students. And when it was conducted at that time, as far as the students were concerned, around 44% of the students said that we have used uh, use, consume this uh, alcohol so that was there so this type of thing is taking place when we talk about the schools in the recent past again when we talk about uh, universities uh, three of the universities uh, their rectors or the higher management was changed for the reason that uh, substance use was found to be quite enormous over there and this is what is happening around across the globe as well as when we talk about Pakistan, the substance use disorder is uh, setting in as far as the youth and the adolescents are concerned. Uh, so the magnitude of drug use is quite high and uh, as far as uh, uh, Pakistan is a poppy free country, uh, so th there is no problem when we uh, um, no growth is there as far as Pakistan is concerned, but it is a route of, you know, trafficking substances, traffic uh, as well as uh, uh, through various borders. So we have got quite a porous border across and through that it is going to the other places. And on the way, the, the spillover is in Pakistan and that is being consumed in Pakistan. When we talk about the academic and uh, academia and substance use, uh, we have got uh, more than 270 universities in Pakistan at the moment. And looking around, when we talk about uh, the number of students over there, that is again in millions, and who are taking up the uh, BS courses or uh, graduate courses as well as postgraduate courses in those uh, universities. And uh, when we, uh, as far as the staff is concerned, unfortunately they are not trained in uh, substance use uh, related curriculum deliveries. So that's another issue. Uh, and moreover, the national studies for the estimates, as I have already uh, mentioned, these are not being taken over there. So this is a research site, again, we have got the problems related with the researches which are to be taken up for the substance use uh, uh, disorders. And uh, most of the students rather, they like to go for convenient sort of uh, researches as far as their uh, um, thesis is concerned for, uh, um, for uh, taking up 
completion of their courses. So most of them, they don't like to actually uh, go for the substance use disorder related studies. So that is there. And uh, in the recently, uh, recent past, uh, I would like to go through that, yeah. Uh, we have observed that uh, there is, in the recent uh, past, there is an increase in the methamphetamine and uh, the more over the synthetic substances, these are being used over there and other designer drugs. This is another issue which is taking place in Pakistan, this there. And uh, well, as far as the youth-friendly counseling services are concerned, these are only available in those campuses where we do have the psychology departments. Otherwise, no youth-friendly counseling services are available in um, uh, most of the university, I would say. And recently, the uh, government of Pakistan actually asked the universities to start some counseling services at each and every clinic which is uh, established inside the universities. So some of the university has started that. And uh, the study program particularly related with the uh, uh, addiction sciences that is not being taken over there. And I would uh, like to emphasize that as far as the substance use is concerned, uh, no standalone program, that is the academia or uh, rehabilitation centers or the uh, psychiatric hospitals. So they cannot take standalone programs uh, for the prevention of the uh, substance and the treatment as well. So it cannot be actually fulfilled until and unless academia plays its role over there. So what uh, academia can do and is doing in Pakistan, that is education, researches, relevant curriculum development. Uh, we are actually emphasizing through, uh, I would say there are some of uh, uh, the people who are actually uh, harbinger in that, like we have got uh, Dr. Salman here, he is actually going from one university to another to start the diploma courses over there, to look into the curriculum, and he is also facilitating in those things to the universities. So networking with other important stakeholders. Uh, so uh, that is what the Phoenix is doing at the moment with various universities over there. And we have got about 12 universities uh, who meet quite regularly as far as their chairpersons and deans are concerned. They meet together, they sit together, they think that how we, we can go ahead and do the work over there. And organizing conferences and seminars, I will give you a few glimpses of that as well. Phoenix was established in uh, 2007, and it's a research-based organization and implements those projects which are evidence-based and taken up. And moreover, we go for the capacity building and the curriculum development as well. And uh, our fourth goal when we look around that, that is the enhancing capacity of the professional interested in working in the field of substance use disorder through training and linkages with institutional university for provision of the training research opportunities. So our fourth goal is uh, actually where the universities are with us. So that is there. And uh, uh, our work with for, uh, you know, this uh, particularly when we talk about uh, uh, universities, that was started from this regional conference and uh, th that was uh, there in Dositani. That was the beginning of, uh, uh, I would say, work for Pakistan. And uh, then we organized, last year we organized three conferences, three international conferences. Uh, some of our friends came on uh, virtually to deliver the lecture. Dr. Prabhupada was there. Uh, then uh, Kevin was also there. There were other uh, friends from across the globe who were there in those particular conferences, one in uh, University of Central Punjab, second one was the National University of Medical Sciences, and third was in the National University of Modern Languages. All these uh, conferences were organized by Phoenix in collaboration with, with these universities. And now we have got a youth group over there that is the uh, uh, Psychological uh, Association of the Youth which has got 5,000 uh, members, and another one is the uh, working for, uh, through 
actually training and uh, that is the uh, happy life uh, psychological uh, one. So this is the way forward. We look forward to actually go ahead, go ahead for the, uh, you know, this uh, uh, national survey on um, uh, drug relation, uh, uh, drugs to be uh, for the estimation of substance users in the university. We look for funds for that. Maybe that would be funded by some international organization as well. And uh, advocacy is of course being taken up, and uh, linkages is also uh, going to be continued. And we are going to organize another uh, conference in Pakistan. And other program, program is related with the, a conference with the, all the deans of social sciences across Pakistan who will be sitting together to discuss about this. And that would be taken up somewhere in November this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Saman. Uh, today we have a, a very special articulation of representation. We saw how to develop a model appropriate for a special region like Africa. Uh, a group of university ICUDR facing challenges in emerging, emerging challenges in, in the middle of the COVID when nobody, know, when nobody knew what to do. That was great. Articulation of policies in drug demand reduction and academy. And let me say something, uh, Ms. Kalowski. Uh, if I tell the story of my university, I would tell the story of uh, CICAD. Since the 1970, we have the summer school with CICAD. Then we have the internships, the exchange of uh, students, professors, and in your time, uh, we develop the diplomas, etc. so on, many, many other things. But at this moment, I can work with uh, Guillermo, a person that I didn't know, just because of uh, his publications, but now I met him in person, to Diana and other friends of the region, Maria Eugenia, so that is uh, what he's doing at uh, CICAD. Thank you so much. Um, finding ways to develop, uh, to solve complex problems is what we, you are doing, Dr. Saman. Uh, fi finding ways to, the, to solve complex problems is what you are doing since the academy. So now it's time to, uh, for some questions of, uh, of you, my friends. Any question? Don't be shy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, please. So, uh, regarding the way, way forward, there are a lot of uh, activities that are going on in the United States and the Western world, especially in the advanced countries. Uh, in the Southeast Asian countries, especially in the Pakistan or African regions, do you have any plans to implement the Recovery Collegiate, which is one of the famous programs in the United States, the Recovery Collegiate, as well as uh, the wellness programs in, in, in the institutions and in the academic institutions? Can we replicate this program in our part of the world because we like all these things? As you have uh, given the recommendation, Dr. Noor, you have already also mentioned about the counseling programs, not only the counseling program, how about the holistic program as a part of the wellness program and a recovery college yet, because it's really worse in the United States I have seen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for your, it's a good question. It's a good question because uh, I think maybe we need to have more exchange uh, between um, American or North American universities and the rest of the world because we are doing a good work in Latin American and Caribbean countries, but uh, always we have more difficulties because the um, United States is a big country, major universities, but 
We are working now, I, I am looking to build uh, and for example, for example, we are working now with uh, Claremont Undergraduate, Undergraduate University in a um, plan of um, social media um, uh, work in campaigns and communication skills, etc. So I think this is a major challenge that now uh, we have to face. And I think we, we will do it in, in the next year or two years, but I think it's, um, it's, it's attractive to another universities in another part of the world, not only in, in America, but uh, in, in another continent to have more exchange of uh, programs or experiences in, with the uh, uh, North American universities. Thank you so much. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much. I want to thank all the presenters for a uh, job well done. Uh, Professor Fernando, we are not shy to ask questions. Uh, probably we are just trying to put our talks together. I would like to find out, is there any provisions to do a kind of a practicum after learning all this UTC, UPC, URC, do you have a room, you know, a kind of opportunity for our learners to go into all these places and have first-hand information about how they can implement all these things they are learning in the classroom to help mankind? Thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate it. So, um, actually, we try to exchange and we love exchange the idea that the reason why we open up for everyone as an internship for UTC, UPC and URC uh, although if it is not fit in our curriculum and program but you can collaborate with a short course or visiting, site visiting and we will provide because uh, it is uh, like a, uh, uh, our uh, princess, uh, it is a benefit for mankind if we uh, can apply. Thank you. Any other question? Please. Um, thank you for the presentation and update. It's great to see the range of activities of, of, across the globe and it's impressive. I'm impressed personally with the outreach to government and the connection of, of what one learns to policy. I think that's, that's critical. And I think there were some references to um, similar outreach to the system that provides and delivers services. I, it, it stimulated me to think about the pipeline, how you recruit people into the field which is something I think we are experiencing shortages post-COVID across the globe. Um, and, and in effect, there are many, many people in recovery, which was raised earlier, um, but also not in recovery, that are working in the field, working in treatment prevention, recovery support programs, harm reduction programs, who want to increase credentials, and in effect, they are already a committed source of pipeline. So the question is, how do you keep them in their positions and their jobs and learning at the same time? A sort of work-based learning approach? Has, have, has that been discussed? Is that ongoing in any examples? Or how do you think of, of of drawing on an existing workforce as part of the pipeline to upgrade? Um, thank you very much for that question. Um, I want to give an example of what we are doing in Africa. So we have a couple of programs, uh, addiction study programs. We have one in the uh, University of Cape Town, I'm aware, in the southern region. We also have one in the Eastern region in Kenyatta University, my university in Kenya. And what we are doing is that we have, since COVID, embraced online learning. 
and that has become very, very, um, you know, attractive to the service providers that are already working because then it means there is flexibility, they can continue to work without having to stop working to come to school and therefore they can do the two together and that has brought in a lot of service providers in our own program. It's a postgraduate diploma in addiction treatment science. We have psychiatrists in the field that are coming in to study uh, virtually. We have got psychologists, we have got social workers, we even have human resource uh, personnel. And all these are actually able to access the program because of the online mode of uh, teaching. We do synchronous as well as asynchronous, and that has been very friendly. Thank you. Friends, it's time to clap our presenters. Thank you so much to all of them. Um, please uh, check the QR that is in the door and fill the survey for this presentation. Thank you so much for, for your presence.